Here we go again. Mason Greenwood gave a good account of himself, despite Getaf suffering a devastating 2-0 loss against Athletic Club on Friday night. Greenwood distinguished himself even in difficult circumstances and demonstrated why some of Europe's biggest clubs are hot on his trail and are eager to offer him his next home. Meanwhile, Borussia Dortmund loanee Jadon Sancho has reportedly made his final decision on his Manchester United future. Back in September, Sancho's future at United was plunged into darkness after a public spat with manager Eric Ten Hag. The Englishman hit back at his manager after Ten Hag criticized his performance during training sessions. As a result, Sancho was frozen out at United and eventually returned to his former club Dortmund on loan in January. Since returning to his former club, Sancho has produced a string of encouraging performances. The 24-year-old played a key role as Dortmund recorded a 1-0 win over Paris Saint-Germain in the semi-final of the Champions League. Now, it has been claimed that Sancho has made his mind up about his future. As reported by Sky Sports Germany journalist Patrick Berger, who wrote on social media, Jadon Sancho, 24, does not want to return to Manchester United, regardless of whether Eric Ten Hag remains in charge or not, sources telling. MUFC preparing for his departure, but no price tag set yet by Man United. Exploring the possibility of a second loan deal, with obligation to buy, as the transfer fee for a permanent deal is probably going to be too high. Talks between clubs soon. Sancho was asked by CBS Sports about his future. He said, I really don't know. I'm focused on the present right now. Speaking about Sancho's recent performances, Ten Hag said, He played very well and he's a very good player. Wednesday he showed why Manchester United bought him and he showed he represents a high value for Manchester United, which is good. I'm happy for Jaden." For the performance yesterday and we'll see what is going to happen in the future. All indications are that Sancho will not play for the club again while Ten Hag is in charge, although both parties may assess upon his return to Old Trafford. Those rumors were heightened further by Ten Hag's comments in his pre-match press conference before United's trip to Crystal Palace on Monday. Jaden played very good against PSG. He showed why Manchester United bought him and he showed he represents a high value for the club which is good. The United boss refused to confirm or deny whether Sancho could stay at Old Trafford once his loan expires, and the Telegraph claim that club officials expect him to depart on a permanent deal this summer. Dortmund are reportedly keen to keep the 23-year-old at Signal Iduna Park beyond this season. On the other side, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has revealed Marcus Rashford is not far away from a comeback. The England international was injured in the Emirates FA Cup semi-final against Coventry City and missed the win over Sheffield United and draw with Burnley. Although it was thought the forward would not be involved again at Crystal Palace on Monday night, the manager told MUTV's Mark Sullivan that there is an outside chance he could prove his fitness in time. Bruno Fernandes and Scott McTominay are also battling against the clock, while Johnny Evans will definitely return to the squad as long as he continues training without any issues over the weekend. We have some players with question marks, Eric told club media at Carrington. Rashi, I think he is a big doubt. For Monday at this moment, I do not expect him back. Hopefully he can make the turn, but that is also the same for Bruno Fernandes. I regret also to say, but he is also a big doubt. He is still fighting for the game on Monday night. The good news is, Johnny Evans returned to the training pitch, and if the two days go well, he will be in the squad. I also expect Scott McTominay, he didn't train during the course of the week, but I expect him back on the training ground and on the pitch on Saturday. He then has two training sessions going into that game with Crystal Palace. The Selhurst Park encounter is our penultimate away game of the campaign, and Anthony Marshall is also making progress in his bid to recover full fitness after undergoing a groin operation in January. The manager has had to contend with a lengthy injury list, but there is a little more time before this latest fixture, after a spell of three matches inside a week. Palace are much improved under new boss Oliver Glasner, and recently won 1-0 at Liverpool. The Eagles have received a huge double boost with England internationals Mark Gwehi and Ebereki Easy, both available to play. Oliver Glasner confirmed he will be able to call upon the highly rated pair for Monday night's game during his pre-match press conference. It's very positive news, he declared. Both of them are fit. Both trained. 
The players were off after Sunday and we started yesterday, preparing them for the United game. Both trained yesterday in the full session and again today, so it looks good. If everything continues as we expect, both will be in the squad. Again and again. Manchester United fans were left stunned by the news that Bruno Fernandes could quit this summer. The Portuguese midfielder, 29, is in his fifth season with the club since joining from Sporting Lisbon. Fernandes signed in January 2020 in a transfer costing an initial 47 millions of pounds, which rises to 68 millions of pounds. But, undoubtedly, he has been the most successful buy in the period since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. The skipper has produced 54 goals and 40 assists in 157 Premier League matches. However, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is preparing for a huge clearout at United in order to try and free up funds for new additions. And Fernandez, who penned an extension until 2026 two years ago, responded to that by saying, Obviously, it doesn't just depend on me, does it? A player always has to want to be here, but at the same time, you have to want him to stay. At the moment, I feel there's that on both sides. I'm not thinking too much about the future, not least because, obviously, this season hasn't been at the level I'd hoped for, either individually or collectively, so far. So, if you want me to be very honest, if I have to think about not continuing in the Premier League, it won't be until after the Euros, because nothing will be able to take my focus away from the FA Cup Final and the Euros, as there's nothing more important than that at the moment. Those remarks will have raised eyebrows both at Old Trafford and across Europe as a host of clubs plot a potential swoop. And here are five places that United captain could end up. Barcelona is another club that is planning a brutal clear-out by putting all but three stars on the transfer list, including Robert Lewandowski. And if they can raise the necessary funds, then Fernandez could be somebody they look to to try and transform their midfield. His agent Jorge Mendez already enjoys a good relationship with the Catalans, and a report emerged last month that he has offered them the United captain. Meanwhile, another team is Real Madrid. Fernandez would be the ideal replacement for the soon-to-be departing Luka Modric in the heart of the midfield. They have been long-term admirers of the star, who they were keen on while he was still at Sporting, and were scouting him at the 2022 World Cup. But with Kylian Mbappe expected to sign on a mega-money package, funds could be tight at Madrid. On the other side, Manchester United have emerged as the front-runners to sign Crystal Palace star Michael Olise ahead of the summer transfer window. The France U21 international has impressed at Selhurst Park this season and is set for a blockbuster move in the summer. According to ESPN, Eric Ten Hag's men are at the front of the queue to sign Olise should he decide to leave Palace at the end of the season. The forward signed a new deal with the Eagles last summer, but is understood to have a release clause that will become active at the end of the season. It's currently unclear how much that valuation is, although it's expected to be significantly higher than the 35 millions of pounds in his previous contract. ESPN have reported that a source has claimed that amount could be between 50 millions of pounds and 60 millions of pounds. Olise's signature will be of high demand in the summer, as it was last year. During their transfer window of madness, Chelsea looked set to sign Olise after triggering the release clause in his deal in August. Football.London reported in January that the Blues remain interested in Olise, with Men's Sports' sister title reporting the Frenchman prefers a move to Old Trafford. 